The title for this message in this series on the church on the move is Multiplication Through Small Groups. If you're just joining us here um, in the middle of this sermon series, we're actually going to wrap up in the end of this month. So next week will be the final um, part in this sermon series on the church and the move. But basically what we've been talking about is really the vision that God's been putting on the heart of the leadership here for us going forward as a church um, that's on the move with with God. What Basically continuing to be the church, right? Um, regardless of what's going on in and around us. As, and, and we had a lot of changes here as a church family. Um, the Probably the biggest one is that we haven't been able to meet as a large group gathering for, yeah, maybe around a year or, or so. Um, and so now we've been breaking up into these smaller venues and meeting in small groups. And we're seeing that's God, how, how God's actually reshaping us and, and structuring us in a way that's different than what we've known before, but believing that is for an effectiveness of the purpose that he's given to us to seek and save the lost, to make disciples and, to all the, and go into all the nations. Um, so the, this is really what we are trying to see through Scripture, what God um, has established and who the church is in, in the Bible and how we can take those truths and, and the, the, the core of the church and put it into this method of, of functioning as a church in this new way, at least for us. I don't think it's new for uh, those who were doing church in the Bible, but it'd be probably really new for us as a as the church here is a nation's church family. And so we've been looking at what that means to do discipleship through small groups, what it means to do missions through small groups or evangelism through small groups. And today we're going to be looking at multiplication through small groups. In fact, those three M's are really, um, excuse me, that those three uh, M being missions, multiplication, and small groups, those are really the, the core parts of the defining attributes of what we're saying is the church on the move and our focus this year. And so we're really digging into this, investing into it, and trying allowing God to envision our hearts for it. So multiplication through small groups, and the key word here is multiplication. And we're going to look at what that means, especially through scripture, and, and then apply it to, to us and and what our focus is, and how we're going to go about doing that here in in our uh, next steps as, as a church. Um, even this new location that God's given us here at um, East City, here in Hungdok, and in the coming months where we'll be moving into kind of a, a little bit more permanent space here in East City. Uh, I mean, it's a small location. It's not very big, but what what we begin to see is that there there's it's perfectly designed for small group gatherings um, and for discipleship through, to happen through small groups, for, for us to learn in God's word and interact in God's word together in small groups and, 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 and be able to worship, pray together in that small group setting as well. And so what does multiplication look like in this way? Well, actually, multiplication, it, it is um, growth. Multiplication is how we grow as a body of of Jesus Christ. If you just take the metaphor and the picture of the body, right? This incredible body that God has designed and, and given to us. The way the body grows, I'm watching my kids grow and, and literally week after week feel like they're just growing in their body so much as well as their, their, their mind and everything else. But the way that body matures and it develops and it grows is not that the cells in our bodies grow bigger, right? That would be really strange that our cells would just be these gigantic cells. It's simply that the cells divide and they multiply. So they grow, the body grows as the cells multiply. And so we get bigger, we get stronger, um, we mature while as those cells multiply. In fact, 
the opposite happens when we age and then we head towards physical death um, is that the cells stop multiplying and growth doesn't and development doesn't happen anymore. But growth happens through multiplication at the cellular level. And so as we get larger, as we grow as a church, we're actually meant to multiply. And, and that is not just a, a, a kind of a metaphor for the body of Jesus Christ. That's actually the way that we see in the Bible, the church growing, is as we get larger and spreads, it gets smaller <laughs> in some ways. That these, these community, smaller communities of faith, they, they multiply, they birth together. And that's, that's really the heart of multiplication. And that's why focusing on multiplication through small groups is what we're going through here in this series on the church on the move. And multiplication is not just something that has happened in the New Testament church or something kind of more recent. This is actually the mandate for God's people from the very beginning of time. Um, let's look at today's Bible quote, which comes from Genesis chapter 9, verse 7. And you be fruitful and multiply, increase greatly on the earth and multiply in it. This is God speaking to Noah. Yeah? And this is right after the flood, after God wiped away all of the earth and humanity except Noah and his family, and the floods receded, and Noah and his family came out of the ark. This is what God said to Noah repeatedly again and again. And you be fruitful and multiply, increase greatly on the earth and multiply in it. In fact, this is a repeat of a command that he gave to who? Adam and Eve in Genesis 1.28. God blessed them and God said to Adam, uh, to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. God's intention for his, his people those who have been made in his image, the image barrier, bearers of God was to multiply his likeness, who he is, and, and fill the earth, to be fruitful and fill the earth. And, and so the only times that God has spoken this command, in fact, is to Adam and Eve and is to Noah, right? And, and so these are, so this, this is before Adam and Eve sinned and disobeyed God. He gave them this command to multiply his, his very likeness of who he, the, his, as image bearers of God, to completely have dominion over the earth. And then after Adam and Eve sinned, disobeyed God, sin came into the world. And in fact, it completely infiltrated the whole world to where God looked down at the face of the earth and there was nothing but wickedness. And that's when it, the Bible says he actually felt sorry for creating man. I mean, wow, what an what a, what a anguish in his heart of just seeing all of humanity just filled to the brim with evil intentions in their heart and nothing towards God except for Noah. He looked at Noah and the Bible describes him as... as founding favor in God's eyes, that he was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. And so God sets apart Noah to, to start all over, and he repeats the same command to, from, that he gave to Adam and Eve to Noah, who is a righteous man, who believes in God, who walks with him, is blameless in his generation. And he says to him, you, be fruitful and multiply. Increase greatly on the earth and multiply it. This is the mandate from the very beginning of time. That God's intention was that his image barrier bearers, those who have been made in his likeness, those who are like God, in his heart, um, in his image, would then multiply and fill the earth. 
And do you know who the next people in line are to do that? It's us. Those who have trusted in Christ to become a new lineage of people in the very, made in the very image, as new creations in Christ, in the very image of Jesus Christ. Colossians tells us that Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And that God, he says this in Romans 8, 29, that he predestined us to become conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. And that's why Christ in us is our hope of glory. Yeah, so we as Christians have been given this mandate by Jesus Christ to therefore go into all the nations and make disciples, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing, immersing people into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, into the communion of the Holy Trinity, and to teach these disciples everything that Jesus has commanded us, right? And so let's look at what multiplication is. And here's the first point for us this morning. Multiplication is a result of making healthy disciples, okay? Because healthy disciples make disciples. That's the, the core heart of a disciple, follower of Jesus Christ, is one who makes disciples. That's what Jesus said, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. That is our core purpose here on earth, is to reproduce ourselves. It is to multiply ourselves, to multiply Christ image bearers, those who are being conformed to the image of Jesus, who lives and dwells in the Christian simply because we have believed in him to be our savior, that we belong to him. We say we don't, we, our life is no longer ours, but it belongs to you, Jesus. So have your way in us. That's the mandate from the very beginning that God is accomplishing through the church, the believers and followers of Jesus Christ. And Jesus made it clear that it's what's involved in making disciples is to, in Matthew 28, 19, it says, to teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So a, part, a big part of making disciples is this teaching, not of head knowledge, not of just learning to memorize the scriptures, which is a wonderful and really good thing to do. But if it's absent of, or if it's disconnected from our trust relationship with God, which is what this is talking about, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. You see, obedience comes through a relationship with God. Uh, teaching these new disciples to develop this love relationship, this relationship with, of trust to where when God says something, we say, yes, I trust you. No matter what else I hear, no matter whatever else is going on, I trust in your word and what you say because I know you are good and I know you love me and that you are with me. And so I obey you. Really, obedience is the, the, the heart. It is the, the demonstration of the disciple of Jesus Christ, that we obey him. And everything that he has taught us, not 10%, not 50%, not even 90%, but to obey all the things that Jesus has commanded us. That's what's involved in making disciples, is to teach other disciples to obey what Jesus tells us is right, is good, is true, and, and reveals him through our life. And it says, and he, Jesus says this, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I feel like this is one of the most important parts of this 
um, commission that we call it in, in Christian circles that like Jesus gave to his disciples. In fact, it's the last thing before he, he sended back to heaven. And I believe it's so important because multiplication can easily be something, if you're like me, can be the focus. Um, this is something that God had to discipline me for in, in a loving way because it's so easy for me to focus on the result. So easy for me to focus on the outcome. And when we focus on the outcome, that, that becomes the, the, it becomes man-centered, becomes me-centered because I am trying to get this outcome. That result of multiplication, it, it, that's something that only God can do. The, the results are not to be our focus. Faithfulness is to be our focus. This applies in every part of our Christian walk in life. In parenting, our focus is not the result of our children becoming uh, faithful followers of Jesus Christ. That's what we are, that's what we desire. That, that we believe is the will of God. But if your focus is simply on, on making sure that they are going to follow God and to f- somehow ensure that's going to happen and make sure that result is going to happen, well, my, my dear fellow parents, it's going to completely wrap your heart in a place of anxiety and, and fear and control. Because you cannot force that outcome. You, we cannot force our children to do certain things and follow a certain path. But we can be faithful to the task that's been given to us. To bring the word of God. To continue speaking truth into their life. To love them with the love of God that's not with condition. To practice faithfulness. To disciple them. That we can do. And actually, we need to do that, to be faithful in those things. And and so Jesus says to us that he's with us, that that the focus is not for us to try to produce disciples, to make disciples, but to go and to go and to, to be faithful in doing the work of teaching new disciples, to obey everything that Jesus has commanded us to do. To go and baptize and immerse people in in the unity of the Trinity. To have communion and fellowship with God and His triune nature and fellowship with one another. To be faithful in bringing people into that. Even despite the results, despite the outcomes, those belong to God. We surrender those to Him. He's the one who brings that fruitfulness We are just faithful to do what God has called us to do, regardless of the results. So we must continue to to be faithful, not focusing on the result and the outcome to control those things, but to simply to do what God has called us to do, regardless of that. Because that belongs to the Lord. I I believe, Christian, if you learn to walk in faithfulness in this way, it will free you. It will free you. Because I, I know from experience when I focus on the outcome and the results, it, it actually cages me in and it burdens me. I live in a sense of fear. If I do something wrong, then the outcome will be affected. Right? And so I walk in a place of fear of being a perfect pastor, a perfect parent, a perfect uh, 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 husband. And I, it, can't, it, it can't revolve around me, but I can be faithful in everything that God's called me to do, regardless of what, I, what the results may be, because that is what we are meant to do and to teach continually every person that we've been given to disciple to obey all that Jesus has commanded us to do. And that's what we're doing. We're developing being a trusting relationship with God, to trust Him and that He is with us. So we go in and make disciples knowing that, okay, I may not be good at this, I may not have all the knowledge of this, but I trust that Jesus is with me, that this is His will, this is what He wants to do. And so you go knowing that Jesus is with me. And I, 
I, I will teach. I, I will point to, to him. I will make disciples knowing that Jesus is with me, trusting in not my own abilities, but in the very presence of God and my relationship with him. And he says that to all of his leaders. Yeah, he said that to Moses that he's with him to go because he is with him, to Joshua that he was going to exalt him among his people and to show the people that he was with Joshua as as much as he was with Moses, that it's about his presence and his being with you. That is of the utmost importance to go and do what he's asked us to do. Multiplication, above all, it's founded in this place of love, of covenant love. That's what we're going to see here in the rest of our message today, is our focus is not on forcing multiplication, but bring, building a strong foundation of love. If you think about just even where multiplication happens within humans, right? In the ideal place, it happens in a place where man and there's a, a man and wife, they enter into a, a, a covenant love relationship together before God, a forever love, a love that is based off of, of God's love, not of compatibility or contraction, con, uh, contracts, but a love that says, I'm with you no matter what. A covenant love. And through that love relationship we have with one another, we have this this desire to reproduce, to multiply in our family. Yeah? And and to to desire that. Within this context, there's a desire and there's a waiting for this reproduction of, of multiplying ourselves to share in this covenant love together and to raise others in this love so that they can then multiply and build that place of love in this world as well. You know, I, I just have this such fond, beautiful memories of the first day that my firstborn, Hannah, was born. I have this picture of the first day where I, she was placed in my arms and I, I just can't even describe to you the, this, to this day the, the feeling I have as I looked into her eyes and I saw her face for the first time. I had been dreaming of this child for years. Even before I met my wife, I had dreamed about this child. I even had her name picked out way before I even met my wife. She was just full in my heart. She was conceived in my heart before she was ever conceived in her mother's womb. And I had dreamed about what she would look like. I had desired her. Um, and then when she was conceived in my mother, in her mother's womb, in my wife, um, I still was say, wondering what she would look like, how she would be, what kind of person that would she would grow up to be, what her first words would be. I just it just was so full in my heart, and and as Kelly carried her so lovingly in her womb, she was very conscious, and we both were of the environment um, that she would grow up in, even within the womb. Right? I know Kelly was very conscious of what she would put into her body, knowing that what she would put into her body would then also um, go into our baby's body. And how that the, the environment of nutrition that we build would actually not just be um, important for her in, through her birth, but even for the rest of her life. That all of those had an impact in it. Um, we, I remember us talking about giving her a diversity of, of food. Uh, Kelly would eat so many different types of food because we read that actually would help then the child, the baby, to taste different tastes so they wouldn't be picky eaters in the future. I don't know if that's all true or not, but we were very intentional about those things because the nutritional environment of the mother's womb affects the health of the baby. And, and so the same thing is true as it, we think about multiplication through small groups is that we we develop healthy disciples right and as we develop healthy disciples and and we we 
grow in these small groups this this desire to to birth to to share in this to multiply in this and so it's not a forcing of this to happen but we as we focus on our first point here focus on loving one another that and we develop this community of of God's love that is starting of the foundation of multiplication because it, ha- it must start there. It must start where because whatever you multiply is going to look like what you just what it just came from. Whatever is birthed, for, uh, the birthing is going to come from the, if you will, the mother, the mother group. Right? It's the 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 first place. So that place, that small group, must have. A focus on loving one another. So a lot of these things that we're talking about, maybe a little bit of review before, but I'm trying to just put it together. Because Jesus told us that our impact on the world depended on the love we show to one another as disciples in Jesus Christ, right? By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And so there's scriptures of of what Jesus has said as well as throughout the New Testament of what what this love is to look like. There's too many to list here, but I just put three here for our consideration. Be, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Wow. What small groups are meant for is to actually be devoted to love, in love for one another, to, to honor one another above ourselves. Ephesians 3, uh, 4, 32 says, Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you and I feel like this is one of the this is so important in terms of really experiencing God's love in a small group is that we have offenses that small groups are you there needs to be experiences of conflict why because this is how we practice the unconditional love of God that he has demonstrated to us in Christ Jesus And that we are to demonstrate to one another. Forgiveness according to God's love in the way that he has commanded us to love is not conditional as the world will understand forgiveness. Okay, I will forgive you if you promise to never do that again. That's our version of forgiveness. That's not God's version and his definition of forgiveness jesus said you we must forgive 70 times seven meaning it's indefinite the love of forgiveness that we extend to one another is unconditional we forgive because god has forgiven us and because we as ident in our identity we are forgivers we demonstrate that to one another and with that experiencing that it's really hard to experience the love of God within communities in faith communities and so it says be kind to one another tender hearted forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you conflict is natural it's it's something that's gonna happen but how we then work through that is and it's not saying it's not Forgiveness is not minimizing, saying, oh, oh, it doesn't matter that much. That's not, that's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is, yeah, that hurt. That, that actually um, stung a lot or it impacted me in a very deep way. But I forgive you. I love you. I, I, I want to seek reconciliation. Let's, let's fight to be one. Not fight to be right, but let's, I want to fight together with you to be united in Christ. And when we do that in these intimate spaces, we start to experience what God, Jesus has commanded to us to love one another. First Peter 4, 8-9 through 9 says, Above all, love each other deeply. The Greek for this is a picture of to be stretched full, at full length to a full stretch of love. Because love covers over a multitude of sins. And that meaning of loving each other deeply is because what this, this the demands within these kinds of relationships is a, a love of full stretches. It will stretch us out to its fullness. But here's the thing. The love that God has given us 
covers a multitude of sins. And it is a fertile environment for disciples to grow in the love of God and also demonstrate his love to others. So vital. So we focus on loving one another. Verse 9 says, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. <laughs> I love that one. I, speak, I, feel, I feel like it speaks directly to me. Because at the heart of hospitality is, is truly the opening up of your heart, not just your home. I believe this is something God really wants to work within, into the heart of the nation's church as, as being a church on the move. is a heart of hospitality, opening up our heart because the heart of hospitality is to not that the persons or who are coming into our homes will provide something for us because if that's your expectation, we will grumble. But that they not provide something for us, but that we actually are there to serve them. That's really at the core of hospitality is people come, we invite people to our home so that we can provide for them, that we can serve them. And when that's our heart, oh, my friends, well, there is, there, the, grumbling cannot mix into that at all. And I believe this is something that we need to practice, that whether it is something that we, we're familiar with and it's part of culture, our culture or not, this is biblical culture. To, to open up our homes and to have people come, fellowship, and to, to serve people in our home space. This is the church in the Bible. This is what it means to, to really express and demonstrate the love of God in these most intimate spaces. In fact, it's really dependent, uh, the gatherings are dependent on this hospitality for those of us to open up our homes and have believers fellowshipping, praying, and, 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 and demonstrating God's love to one another in these spaces. I believe that's really important that we practice this and remember and i want to say this to us because to keep reminding us that yes at through the pandemic right now there's a whole bunch of different mandates and a whole bunch of different and it's always moving and things but remember church god is the one who governs the church we are respectful to the government but we have to remember and put at the heart of hearts that god is the one who governs the church He's the one who leads us. He's the one who, who we have to continue to put ourselves before and say, God, what do you want me to do as your child, as your servant? In this context, how do you want me to, to go about and, and demonstrating your love to the lost, to people around me, to my brothers and sisters? with what's going on. And sometimes that will fall in line with what's going on here in, in, the, 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 in terms of rules and regulations, and sometimes it doesn't. But I believe that's so important for us to understand that we, as a church, we're, we are first and foremost, our leader is Jesus Christ. And our governance is based on what God leads us in as a church. Otherwise, the government governs the church. And that, we cannot, that cannot be our, our government. That cannot govern us. Jesus is our Lord. Amen? And I hope you can hear me on that. It's not being disrespectful, dishonoring, or not in honoring of the government, not listening to that. But if we, if we keep mixing this up, I think we lose our way as being a church that is on the move because we need for God to govern our hearts first and foremost, to listen to Him regardless, to be the church, whatever the climate is in the world, to be the church. The other point here is that a church on the move that that multiplies and one of the key signs of multiplication is a, is a small group that everyone's participating in. 
that here's a second point to that uh, it's 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 a it's a small group of believers that are ministering to each other and evangelizing together like we saw last week. First Peter four continues in in verse ten. So this we read in verse nine, and we're going in verse ten. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. I love that the gifts that we receive from God from the Holy Spirit are is are God's grace in various forms that we have. How beautiful is that? And if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. And the purpose for exercising our gifts, and which we all need to do, is so that it reveals God. It gives praise to God. It glorifies Him. It demonstrates His grace to one another. Uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14 1, to pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. Pursue love. That, that, as we pursue love, what, as we pursue to love one another, we will realize we need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to do that. The empowerment of His gifting to, to share the love of God in a very tangible, practical way. And so we must earnestly desire after spiritual gifts. It's part of this. And within this small group setting, it's so important that everyone is participating in ministry to discover as we're pursuing love together that we are allowing each other to discover and exercise our spiritual gifts. In fact, that's one of the key signs of a, a group that's ready to multiply, that they're loving one another, and that everyone's participating in ministry together, evangelizing together. It's in Matthew 5, 15, Jesus says, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand and gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Don't fall into the trap of a small group in your gatherings to just be in that holy huddle together. What you're meant to do as you're practicing and demonstrating God's love together, ministering to one another, is to let other people see. Let the outsiders see, to let your light shine before others, to see those good works so that they may have the opportunity to give glory to our Father in heaven. So ministering together, evangelizing together. And lastly, one of the important things that we focus on and that will show that we're ready for multiplication is that there's, we're growing leaders within our small groups. Um, Paul and Timothy have this beautiful picture of this, um, of how Paul raised Timothy as a leader in the church and how he continued to work in him. In fact, uh, Paul said many times to imitate me as I also imitate Christ. He said this in, to, the first, uh, to, to the church in, in Corinth. And he said this in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, um, verse 16 through 17, I urge you then, be imitators of me. That is why I sent you Timothy, my beloved and my faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ as I, as I teach them everywhere in every church. So he basically, Paul is saying to the church in Corinth, just imitate me, do, do as I do, because what I'm doing, I'm just following after what Jesus, I'm just imitating Jesus. And, and I'm going to send you Timothy to show you, um, because he's a faithful child of mine, but he's going to help you remind you of my ways in Christ, because he imitates me. He's, he is one that I've raised and I've been growing so that when you see him and you see him acting and you see him demonstrating the love of God and you see him preaching and you see him teaching, he's following in my ways where I've been following in Jesus' ways. And he's a reproduction, he's a multiplication of me imitating God, yeah, imitating my Lord Jesus. And he said this directly to Timothy. 
He said to him in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. In our small groups, this is something that we need to focus on, is that we can never not have this in our minds, is to grow other leaders to grow new leaders to pass this along without without having leaders who are being raised multiplication cannot happen um, and so the key signs again are a, a small group that where a loving community is happening where missions is happening evangelism is happening where everyone is participating together that's happening and also new leaders are growing these are really important signs and this is what we are to focus on for multiplication to happen in a way that God intends for it to happen as i said i'm going to try i've tried to keep this message to the point and, and short and hopefully then as you meet in your households in your gatherings together, you can take these points, take these scriptures and discuss them more in depth and more importantly, pray into them. So here's your discussion and prayer points for this morning. First one, what is one thing that encouraged you and what is one thing that challenged you from the message today? Talk about that in an open way, in an honest way, and let us really connect and interact with God's truths together. And then in your time of prayer, please pray for multiplication in our church through making of healthy disciples. That's the focus, that we focus on making healthy disciples because healthy disciples make disciples. Pray that each of our small groups be envisioned and empowered to make disciples who make disciples. That is the heart of what the church is, to go and make disciples who will make other disciples. Praise God. Let me close us in prayer, and then we'll take a, a few, maybe a five-minute break, and we'll join on on the Zoom link for our annual finance report. Father, thank you for the wonderful truth that we find in your word week after week, and we pray into this. Father, that, Lord, you will envision our hearts with the the purpose that you've given us to make disciples and make disciples god i pray for the discussions i pray for the meditations that are happening through this word of focusing of how we can put ourselves in and stepping into ways of where we can truly love one another because we heard how this from jesus our lord that this is the impact on the world of how we love one another and to help us in this as we practice it in our current situation. I pray, Father, for the bringing of creativity and inspiration of your Holy Spirit. And how we walk this out together as your body. In Jesus we pray. Amen.